Hey guys, welcome back and welcome if you're new. Today I have a special guest with me, my Hi. husband Caleb. Um, he, I was bugging him to come on with me and film a little Q&A for you guys and he's very sweet and obliged. So today um, I asked you guys questions or asked you to ask me questions over on YouTube community and Instagram and there are a bunch. So we're just going to kind of dive right in. Let's get into it. When and how do you and Caleb make time together? to do things you enjoy as a couple. What are you and Caleb's pet peeves about one another? I can answer. Diving right in, that's kind of a twofold. You can answer what? The first one. Okay, what's the first one? Well, you said the how do we make time for each other. Um, we've been super blessed over the last, well now it's been three or four or five years since yeah. we've kind of had a weekly date night. And um, you might be hearing this and being like, oh, well that's impossible for us and really like, it was for a while. We, we haven't really had family close most of the time as we've had kids and um, we've been really fortunate. We would have a babysitter and we're just really forward with the babysitter and said, hey, could you just come every week? And if no. you need to cancel or like uh, make it, you know, call an audible or something that week, like no big deal, but let's just make Thursday night, Friday night, date night. And uh, we've had a babysitter back in Georgia and then here our, our babysitter lives next door and she just walks over. So we've been super yeah. blessed with that. Um, just kind of making that a priority and um, every penny has been worth it to have that weekly date night. For sure. I saw quite a few other questions come in that were similar. Like how do you, how do you do date night with three kids? I have three under three or four, three and under, you know, all the different numbers. And I will say it took us having the third yeah. baby to really start prioritizing it. Um, Cause we didn't for years. I was gonna say, I think what happened was, is we probably went a whole year, the first year after having Graham maybe without having a single date night, right? Yeah. And we know that's all too common for a lot of couples. And so we just kind of drew a line in the sand and said, okay, this is a problem that has a solution. and. Let's figure it out. Yeah, for sure. And I think just prioritizing that, you know, over, it's not like we go on some really fancy date yeah. every it's week. It's going to be Chick-fil-A. <laughs> yeah, literally yeah. going to Sam's Club together without kids can yeah. sometimes be date night. And that's the beauty of, beauty of it. So. Yeah. Before we go any farther, I kindly want to just take a moment and thank today's video sponsor, Homeaglow. It's officially spring and not only are we tackling typical spring cleaning in our home that we do every year but we're also getting ready to put a house on the market yeah. so making sure everything is really clean and ready to go is super important oh, one awesome thing about home aglow is that you can book online instantly so you're not having to you know call some phone number and wait for somebody to get back to you when you're ready to have a cleaner come you just hop on and get it booked scheduled so you're ready to go yeah it's really easy you just go on and click the time and the date that you want and then a cleaner who has an availability in your area will confirm the appointment. Because I know that's something in the past that's been an issue where the cleaner would come at a certain time and we weren't ready, right? Or that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, this happens. is kind of like cleaning on demand, which is pretty great. One thing that is also awesome, this is you know a nationwide service that you can use, but and you get kind of that convenient platform, but 100% of your cleaning fees and tips go directly to the cleaner. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. Another cool feature is that you can browse photos and reviews of background checked cleaners before you choose one that's right for you. You know, I'm looking forward to today, it's sunny, it's starting to warm up yeah, just with the, the weather being days. nicer, getting outside and enjoying it and to have some help with our you know, deep kind of spring clean will be super nice. So nice. Thinking about just coming home, that like <sighs> yeah. moment, that breath of fresh clean. air where every square inch is clean and it's ready to just enjoy. Get that new house smell. Yes. Clean house smell. Clean house smell. <laughs> Take home cleaning off your plate this spring by using Homeaglow. You can head to homeaglow.com forward slash Amy Fritz or use the QR code on screen to book your appointment today and you will get your first three hours of cleaning for $19. So it's a steal. So again, check out that link down in the description below. And thanks again, Homeaglow, for sponsoring today's video. If y'all have a disagreement about something, do you work it out then or give it time and come back to it and try again? Hope that makes sense. That's a good question. That is a good question. I would say, so we've been married, it'll be 11 years this summer. So a good amount, a good chunk of time. A decade. <laughs> a decade. Yeah. But I, I mean, I can maybe count, I don't even know if I can count on one hand. We, I don't know if we've ever had a fight where we yelled at one another and like stormed off. Can you, I, 
maybe once or twice. Well, I can't think of any. Yeah, we're we're both pretty agreeable slash non-confrontational, which um, doesn't mean we're we're not perfect, perfect by any anything. stretch. Yeah, but um, I think most things we've we're able to kind of come together pretty quickly and yeah. and get on the same page. Um, I think having just aligned, we've always had aligned values and priorities yeah. and that's super helpful. Like the, we're, we're always aligned on the big picture and just kind of what we want out of life. And that seems to help us work out the smaller details. That's true. Yeah. I will say, I feel like if we ever do have a disagreement or I'm upset about something or you're upset about something, we might take a couple minutes to cool off, but I feel like within the hour or like within a couple hours, we never like we don't let the sun go down. On yeah, I was gonna say that passage yeah. in somewhere in the New Testament. <laughs> don't let the sun go down in your I anger. It's is Ephesians. it's either that or two Corinthians. It's one of us. <laughs> too soon. Yeah. Um, how do you guys find balance? I'm sure you guys have different views on things and have to find that happy place. Tell it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, I would say there's. And I've kind of heard this elsewhere from other pastors or thought leaders, just that there's no such thing as balance per se, only rhythm. And and what that means is that, you know, we, we want balance. We want things to feel like everything's in their place, but life is just never going to be like that. Yeah. There's going to be seasons where you're really heavy with kids. You have young kids, you're up at all hours. There's going to be seasons where maybe you're, you don't have a family or your kids are out of the house and you're more focused on work or, or other things. And, um, there's even the, the, the smaller version of that of like week to week or month to month. Like, you know, Amy's always making videos. There's weekends where it's a video weekend yeah. and we're filming, we're just all in on that and I'll take the kids to the park so Amy can work. And then there's weekends where we do nothing, right? Like yeah. that's, it's way out of balance, but there's a rhythm to every week or every yeah. season. That's good. Okay. okay. I get this one every time I put in a Q and A with this guy, but people want to know what you do for a living. Yeah, great question. And I, I can't remember when we did the last q and I think it's changed a little bit more yeah. recently in the last year or so. Um, but I, I had the opportunity to join a, an awesome local company that is kind of here in Ohio, um, and which is a really great opportunity for me. And what I do now is the software consulting, um, kind of in the warehousing industry. So I uh, help existing customers use our software. It's actually really fun because I, I love teaching and I love helping people. And so yeah. I kind of get to be a teacher slash helper kind of person, but in a very uh, corporate kind of setting, which has been really fun for me. So um, I enjoy that a lot. Software consulting, software sales is, is kind of what I do, um, but every day looks a little bit different and uh, it's really fun being kind of in the technology space. Yeah, and something I haven't really talked about much on my channel since him kind of starting this new career path is that um, he does a lot of traveling. Yeah. He's been doing a lot of traveling. So yeah. again, coming back to that balance question, like it's, I've been having to find new rhythms and over the last year of just kind of seeing and feeling what it feels like to, you know, handle the kids or film YouTube videos and kind of juggle him traveling, me kind of being on this health journey, which we'll get into, I'm sure, but um, it's been really good for our family. Yeah, it's been awesome. Yeah. We weren't exactly sure. It was kind of a leap of faith when we kind of made that decision to to take this specific position, this opportunity. Um, but Amy, you guys know she's amazing and just incredible, and she's been so supportive um, of me kind of taking this step and, and moving into this capacity. And so it's been really fun uh, getting to travel. I, I get to go to um, states out west where I have family out there, which has been really, really cool, yeah. getting to see my brother and um, another family. And so it's been really fun, um, but there's nothing like uh, coming back home to Amy and the kids and all that good stuff. Yeah. Always happy to, happy to have you home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you both most excited about with the new build? Um, so many things. I know you have a lengthy list. <laughs> and if you don't know if this is news to you, we are in the process of building a house. I've been filming lots of videos on that. So go check it out on my channel. And to kind of kill two birds with one stone, so to speak, to answer another question we've been getting a lot. Um, we will be selling our current home as much as we love it. We toyed with the idea of hanging on to it, but I think it just kind of makes the most sense yeah, to yeah. sell. Yeah, it just makes more sense to sell and have one less roof to worry about. Um, 
but uh, yeah, we're yeah. excited. What about, are we excited about? Yeah, we're we're excited. <laughs> we're excited about um, moving, having a little bit more space. Um, yeah, more space. Yeah, this this house has been really good to us, and I know there might be a few people that have been following uh, Amy's channel since our Georgia days. But when we lived in Georgia, we we kind of got spoiled. We had a, yeah. a, a big time, a, a whole, yeah, a whole acre on a cul-de-sac and a, a you know really nice kind of yard and, and big house, and it was such a blessing. It was amazing, and um, we moved up here to be closer to family. Um, you know, we kind of made some compromises and just just to kind of get up here, and yeah. it's, it's been on our hearts for a long time. We can think back to this one evening in particular where we sat at the dining room table. We're like, okay, like like what's next? What do we really want? Yeah. And it was just amazing how things kind of unfolded from there and I'm excited to yeah be on a few acres and have some woods I grew up with woods in the yeah. backyard before it'll be amazing to have that again for our kids just a little bit more space and um, to have been able to lay out everything and have everything where we want it you know for the far, most part <laughs> for the most part right it's like you know you get to draw up all the plans right yeah. and so it's uh, if you don't love it, it's your fault, right? <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, but but we're we're excited <laughs> oh to uh, to have a, a new construction, you know, build and, and just kind of a fresh start. Yes, and that's I will say I think this is kind of silly, but one of the things I'm most excited about is to have an ensuite bathroom again. Yeah. We haven't had that since living in this house now for a little over three years, which you know, isn't the end of the world. We make do, like it's totally fine, yeah. but it you don't realize what a luxury it is yeah. to have a master suite until you go without one I, for a few yeah. years. I, yeah, you're right. I feel like it's one of those things growing up when you're a kid, like no kid has an ensuite bathroom, well, some right? some kids you, do. So, I guess some do, Jack and Jill's, whatever, but a lot, I, I didn't. I didn't And either. so you used to walk down the hall and then, you know, you go live in a dorm in college or your first apartment and it's still probably not en suite or whatever. You're, you've got roommates. Um, and then eventually maybe you get that second house down the road where it's like, oh, wow, yeah, we've got an en suite bathroom and it's a game changer. Tractor. So, yeah, there goes the tractor. That's one reason too. Yeah, at least the, when the tractors drive by, they'll still drive by. You know, we're out we'll here in farm country, but they'll be a few hundred feet back yeah. instead of 30. So. Okay. Somebody had a handful of gardening questions, but they asked if you love gardening. <laughs> and, that is a great question. I mean, we all know I love gardening. It Flower gardening has my heart. I've been getting more into vegetable gardening a little bit here at this house. Um, I am so excited to have a big garden. That's another thing about the new build I'm really looking forward to is having space yeah. to have a big garden and getting to re-landscape the house. Oh, I'm so excited. But... Um, yeah. Do you love gardening, babe? <laughs> yeah, so that's a great question. Um, it, yes and no. Uh, the no part is, it's funny, I remember growing up, my, my parents were really into gardening, and that was actually one of the things, if I got in trouble, if I were grounded, so to speak, my mom would make me pull weeds. Like, that was one of the ways that <laughs> she would punish me. Um, and uh, so I have, uh, you know, kind of some trauma there, if you will. But, but I love the... The fruits of the labor when it comes to gardening, right? I love the flowers. I love having the fresh, um, you know, fruits, vegetables, etc. Uh, and going back to kind of marriage and balance yeah, and that sort of thing. Yeah, we just had a conversation. Sorry, yeah. cutting you off. Well, we yeah, just it's... had this conversation probably like last week or the week before. Mm -hmm. I was telling Caleb that I have a strong desire for us to take up a hobby together yeah. that yeah. neither one of us had really dived into before which i i know i've been doing lots of landscaping but i really have just basically gotten my toes wet as far as like vegetable gardening and having yeah. a big because we've really garden. just had a couple of raised beds in the backyard and yeah um, you know not that much space and so now right. we'll be able to start from scratch and yeah you know, play and so thing. he's agreed he's agreed that yeah. gardening is going to be our thing so we'll yes. see we'll gardening see. gardening's going to be our hobby um we're yeah. not running and <laughs> doing all of that gardening's going to be our thing yeah. um the biggest thing for me is i just yeah i really want to run a water line that's like my dream garden is just having a water spigot like yeah. right there i uh i mean having a drink would probably be the dream garden well yeah yeah but what but what i mean is <laughs> with gardening here's here's my thing is i love plants i love all of that stuff I don't like dirt. <laughs> I don't like getting like dry dirt. And so being able to wash my hands like every so often yeah, while I'm in the dirt. Yeah, I'm kind of funny about that. But Which is um, like the premise of gardening is getting your hands. Wear gloves. I know. Well, I have my hands get sweaty in the gloves. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah. yes, we're going to we're gonna try to love gardening. We're, we're going to. Um, has the building process been stressful? Lots of people asking that. If so, what parts? And have we been able to kind of communicate through what we both want and and has that been stressful hmm. 
I think we might get two different answers here because <laughs> it, hasn't, I don't think so. it hasn't been very stressful for me. Um, but I have not made nearly as many decisions as Amy, and I kind of say that in, in a good way. Yeah, yeah. Um, you guys watch Amy's channel, you know. I, I love Amy's taste. I love every decision she makes as far as paint colors or finishes and that <clears> sort of thing. And so um, when she comes to me worried about what kind of countertops we're going to get, I'm going to say, hey, like, I like that one and I like that one. Which, which one do you like <laughs> yeah. more? So it's been easier for me, but I know <clears> Amy's definitely had... I think decision fatigue on just a how little many bit. I think early on, like when we were first drawing up plans, I think we worked really, really well together because I would kind of share what I wanted and what my vision was. And then Caleb and I have very different brains <laughs> in the way we think. And so he was able to look at like a rough drawing of what the builders and I came up with, and he would go, Oh, but like, what about these sight lines? And I would be like, oh my gosh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. And so he was really good about coming in and kind of making tweaks on the kind of logical side of things with the house plan itself. And then for the most part, I really don't mind designing materials and, and picking things out solo. Every once in a while, like today, we're gonna go down and select fireplace stone because that's been really stressful for me and getting that second opinion. But for the most part between me and then there's also a designer on the builder team. So kind of have somebody to go back and forth with. That's been really helpful. I would just say it's decision fatigue at this point. It's not so much stressful. Because yeah. really, you have the budget. You kind of try to stay as close and you can, as close as you can, and and the rest is like you gotta kind of let it, the dust settle. Yeah, and, <laughs> and overall, overall, it's fun. It's exciting. Again, like the big picture of yeah. we're so excited to have this house that'll be brand new and in a dream location, and um, you know, all in perspective. It's hard to be too stressed out when something's exactly. So exciting. I think we we live really close to the build, and so we're over there every single night, and. Yeah. Pretty much every single night we look at each other and we're like, we can't wait. Yeah, we can't here. wait. Yeah, can we move in? Like, can we go and move There's in? There's electricity so, now. I mean, we can, so, we can move in. So, yeah, we're just, we always come back to just trying to have a grateful heart, try to be content. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it's been, it's been a really good experience so far. Yeah. Somebody asked, will you be doing any DIYs even though it's a new build? Um, we'll probably answer this quickly, but I would say yes. Um. You know, it's not like we have an endless budget with this build. We're not doing every little thing that we want to do. We have to make some compromises and then also just not finish some things that we plan on finishing at some point. Um, will they be DIY? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. I, I will say we've done a fair amount of DIY in this house, probably more than any other house oh, yeah. we've lived in. Um, and this house was built in the 1800s. So yeah. if you've done any DIY projects, you know... <laughs> Uh, having a level house, having like right angles, straight lines, <laughs> yeah. is really helpful if you're hanging shiplap or doing board and batten or any of those kind of fun DIY stuff. Yeah. Um, so I am excited if Amy asked me to do some kind of accent wall or some board and batten or something or some shiplap to already know, okay, it's level, <laughs> it's straight lines. Yeah. Um, cause I'll watch these videos on YouTube and I'm like, yeah, but it, uh, my wall's not like your wall, right? Um, right. with these plaster walls and and everything so I'm looking forward to it it's it has been really fun the DIY projects that we've done I feel like every time I I end up picking up a new tool learning a couple new different things and so I yeah I am I am definitely looking forward to yeah, it yeah so. lots of people asked how I got Caleb on board with like eating healthier and they've asked if you've been on a health journey um, and how we both kind of make time for that yeah so yeah do you there's want a lot to unpack there um, I will say as far as yeah, we're not the same person. We're not living the exact same life. We're not doing the exact same things right now in this season. Well, we never will be. Yeah. <laughs> um, Caleb has been insanely supportive of not only my health journey. He never complains when I serve him a salad. <laughs> never. <laughs> um, but also, like, I would not have been able to run and get into running like I have if you haven't you know, supported me. There have been so many weekends where it's like, well, babe, I gotta go run 10 miles. You got the kids? And he has never once, again, complained or, you know, we, we make it work, we balance it yeah. out, but like you've been incredibly supportive. So um, hopefully I can return the favor. But, yeah, yeah, um, for sure. I mean, if I, if I can add to that too, I think like, you know, uh, two hours to go on a long run on a Saturday is not that big of a deal, right? Like it, it really isn't. It's that communication, it's understanding, okay, 
these two hours are super important to her. It's going to make or break her day or her week for the, you know, the goals that she's trying to accomplish. And so, you know, we've, we've made it really fun. And uh, now with technology, it's great. It's like, that's when I go and just drop her off in a cornfield somewhere. And you've seen oh, her, some her stories. That. <laughs> yeah. um, but you know, it's, it's kind of fun just dropping her off and then yeah. following on find my, I'm yes. kind of that, you know, stalker husband of, okay, yes. where, where is she at now? Um, I will say is food. I know this can be an issue for a lot of couples. Um, I'm, we're, we're kind of lucky in that I, I love healthy food. Like I love, I eat vegetables. I love salad. I just also like pizza and ice cream, right? <laughs> right. So that's, that's kind of been the struggle for me is, is just having just the positive things and, and trying to be moderate and the, the other things. Just the other day, you got that huge bag of chocolate from Sam's Club, right? It's like, <laughs> I don't do well when that kind of stuff is yeah. in the house. Um, I think as far as the health journey, again, we have been kind of very tunnel vision in different things. My new career, my new role, sure. travel, um, there's been some unique challenges with that. Um, but Amy has been very focused on what's important to her and, and sticking to that. And the best I can do is just support her and say like, Hey, keep going. Yeah. And, uh, I'll, I'll catch up eventually. Yes. So that's the plan. Yeah. And along those same lines, people want to know if you've also started running. Yeah. Kind of. Um, or if, you know, working out yeah. and, um, yeah. Um, you know, I am signed up for a Spartan race, uh, in a few months. So it's probably going to kick my butt. Um, but I'm, I'm hoping that can be a catalyst to just slowly incrementally build up the exercise. So. Yeah. And it's been really neat to see kind of the family get involved. Um, the kids, the last, we haven't done it a ton, but Emma, our oldest, is signed up for 5k now yeah. and not that like anybody needs to be a runner they can walk it whatever just getting more active but we've gone on little like family runs for like a mile yeah. and it is the cutest thing they get so excited and i just want to be an example of of moving my body i really don't care what my kids get involved in as far as sports or or activity i just want them to live healthy active lives yeah and if we can model that and example that then great yeah so. Okay. What are your favorite healthy go-to meals? Breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks for each of you. Um, favorite go-to. Um, well, our dinner last night is kind of turning into a healthy go-to. Yeah. Um, they are the sweet potato, the, the barbecue chicken, sweet potato nachos. It's a mouthful. I shared that recipe on my channel in one of my last couple of videos. So go check that out. I think in a way, eat in a day. But basically you just um, slice up, I think I did three sweet potatoes, drizzle it in some olive oil and some seasonings, pop that in the oven for 20 minutes, then pull it out, do some shredded already cooked chicken. So we had some leftover chicken on hand. You could do artisserie chicken, whatever. Toss that in some barbecue sauce. You could also do pulled pork, I suppose, too. It would be really delicious. Mm. And then top it with whatever you want. Cheese, jalapenos, red onion, avocado, black beans, and oh my word really good yeah 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 it was really good it was really good i'll say breakfast um lately i've been just trying to simplify and have like a set protein shake that i just you know have every morning just to be consistent um but if we're gonna you know have some fun with breakfast uh you know nothing beats avocado toast in my opinion like my perfect avocado toast is actually like a like a whole grain um sprouted bread uh, really, you know, thin slice with an you know, avocado and then a fried egg. So mm -hmm. that way you're getting the egg, you're getting the avocado, you're getting some carbs, maybe some bacon for some extra protein. Um, but uh, one thing I'll say, I love like uh, pasta and rice and carbs and stuff, but I hate feeling bloated when I yeah. eat those sorts of things. <clears throat> um, having a rice cooker though is a game changer just to make rice super easy on demand. Yeah. But I will say if you like pasta and you like Asian kind of food, one thing we've been doing a lot is this uh, these sweet potato glass noodles. Yeah. So if you ever had chop chay before, it's basically, it looks like spaghetti, but the only ingredient is sweet potato. It's just processed in such a way that it just looks like a spaghetti noodle. Um, and you can boil those really quick or, and then saute them up with some vegetables. Add in a little should, bit of protein. In my next What I Eat in a Day, we should make that. And you yeah. should get on camera with me for dinner. Okay, yeah, I'll make some chop chay we'll for you that. guys. Love it. <laughs> and then for like lunches, I like to, if I can make it in five minutes, then it's a win for me. I've been doing lots of like chicken salad. So I'll mix rotisserie chicken with some cream cheese. I do like dill pickle sometimes. Sometimes I'll do more traditional with grape or celery or almond. On a piece of Dave Killer toast, I'll make yeah. a turkey sandwich. Um, the simpler, the better. 
in my opinion, just something that's moderately healthy that I can get in pretty quick or even just leftovers too, I suppose. Do we plan on adding any animals to the house, the new house, the new homestead? Oh gosh, she used the word. Uh, <laughs> animals. Well, we already have a dog that's we do. very needy. She's a very needy. Very we, had needy. To, we had to put her outside for this video, otherwise she'd be right here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's tough, because I know people do the whole chicken thing and have fresh eggs. I'm not opposed to it, but I'm also in a point in life where I, I don't really want to add any more responsibility mm -hmm. to life. Um, there's, we have friends that have chickens and have eggs. Like we could get it. I know that's the tricky thing yeah. about here is that so many people have homesteads yeah. that it's all very accessible. Lots of people do meat chickens. Lots of people do eggs. Lots yeah. of people. But drive down the road. There's signs like not every other house, but probably every couple miles down a country road says eggs five dollars, and you could just. Knock and they're and fresh and, and yeah. pasture raised and really yeah. really good quality so it's it's tough to beat that um in the sense of financially i mean i know people joke all the time like having chickens costs x amount oh versus what you're actually getting yeah. out of it now i realize there is a beauty and um being like self-sustaining yes like right. there yeah. there is definitely weight yeah. in that we're we're pretty confident if the apocalypse happened here and West Ohio, like like we'd be there'd okay. be eggs we'd, to spare. We'd, we'd band together, like we'd figure it out. We're blessed. We know we're blessed in that. But that regard. I will say, um, I don't know. I could see us. I don't see us getting any other like farm animals yeah. other than chickens. Never say never, but um, we'll probably get some like barn cats. Yeah. Our kids really want cats, but I'm allergic, so it's tough. Um, yeah. Maggie could maybe use a companion. Maggie could someday. maybe. It's, yeah, our 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 dog needs a dog. Basically, yeah. is where we're at. On they that. say um, all golden retrievers need that though, and then you get another one, and then you just have two needy golden retrievers. So if you have, if you are a family with multiple golden retrievers, let us know. Yeah, let us know. Answer one more. We don't want this to get too long winded, but somebody asked, um, "What would you say are the biggest shifts in your mindset now compared to prior to your health journey?" Um, and I feel like that's a really good question because if I've learned anything, it's that mindset is really everything and something, ooh, that wind is howling. The wind is everything. <laughs> the wind, sorry. Um, but mindset is everything in the sense of you really have to ditch the perfectionist mindset. Um, I've tried dieting in the past. Um, or you know trying to lose weight in the past it was very much like okay I'm gonna eat whatever I want this weekend because Monday's coming and when Monday comes I'm gonna eat nothing but celery and salad yeah. and rotisserie chicken and I'm gonna run 10 miles and do 100 sit-ups every single day for the rest of my life so I better enjoy yeah. this weekend because Monday's coming yep. and you are not going you're not setting yourself up for anything but failure yeah. when you do that and so for me, it came down to realizing that all I could control was my next meal. And I would try to just make the best choices I could, given whatever the circumstance was. You know, whether it's, you know, maybe today, um, like you mentioned earlier, like swapping out french fries for just some roasted sweet potatoes with our chicken at dinner yeah. or our burger. Maybe it's taking the bun off a of burger, still enjoying the things that You've I You've been taking enjoy. that bun, bun off for a whole year. Yeah, yeah. it's just yeah. a habit now. And yeah. there's nothing wrong with the bun. I don't just really the even need bun. to. Well, I still like to have the bottom bun, yeah. like a little, you know? It's just finding those little things, those little tweaks and habits, drinking that lots of water that are sustainable yeah. To where, you know, if I go out on date night with Caleb on Friday night and I eat whatever I want, I don't think about it. I don't wake up Saturday and go, oh gosh, okay, got to start over. I yeah. go, no, I'm going to drink a bunch of water this morning. I feel a little bloated, maybe get a little workout in and I'm just going to keep on going. And yeah. I think that's really the key to sustainability for longevity and ultimately weight loss. Yeah. And if I could add to that too, I think, um, you know, you have to be careful with this kind of mindset sometimes so you kind of got to know yourself but at the end of the day like measured things move right so if you want to move in a certain direction um your weight loss is relatively simple it's a calorie deficit over time right and so i think it's important to just start with understanding okay what are my maintenance calories right if you've been at the same weight for a long time just figure out what what are you eating right now calorie wise like there's free resources free apps to just go ahead and figure that out again like if that's a 
if that's an issue for you, like you need to consult a physician before you like really <laughs> dial into that, if you know what I'm talking about. But if that isn't really an issue for you, like you just need to have that awareness of like, oh wow, like I had no idea that eating this cheeseburger was like 800 calories from right. this fast food place or whatever. It is a very eye-opening when you do track for the first time. Yeah. I will say it's crazy. I was trending up over this, like before this last year, before losing the weight, I was trending up like five or 10 pounds a year. And I was in a calorie surplus of several thousand calories a day. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah. So that's also a good reminder that it takes time to gain the weight. It's going to take yeah. time to lose yeah. it. So my, um, yeah, my, my rule of thumb is like, Hey, like if I'm going to put it in my body, it might, it's, it's worth taking 30 seconds to just look it up on an app and figure out how much it's worth, how much am I spending calorie wise? I'm not the best at that, but that's where trying to have some repeat stuff like my protein shake, I know, okay, it's 250 calories and I get a lot of protein and I feel great, right? And just doing that on repeat. But Yeah, I think um, you just even having that self-awareness now is gonna start making yeah. big changes because yeah. Um, that's, yeah, half the battle is being aware of what you're putting in. Putting in. Okay guys, so well, I think that's all the questions we're gonna answer today. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch. We're so glad that you're here. Thanks for coming. Yeah, thanks, thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah it's always fun. <laughs> and um, if you like today's video, do me a favor and give it a big th thumbs up and subscribe if you're new here. I would love to have you. And we're definitely going to film that what I eat in a day soon. So yeah. hold me accountable to that. And um, I'll see you guys really soon in the next one. Bye. Bye. <laughs> this is real life. <laughs> Maggie. Maggie. Oh. Everyone's looking for a puppy. <laughs>